Hello, Monetization Nation, and happy President's Day. I have a lot of respect for our U.S. presidents, so we tried to find all of the U.S. presidents who were entrepreneurs, and we found 11. This isn't political. We took presidents from any party as long as we could find stories of their entrepreneurship. In this episode, I'm going to tell you stories about these 11 U.S. entrepreneur presidents and what we can learn from each of them. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business, causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan William, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. In April 1982, President Ronald Reagan gave a speech before the U.S. Chamber of Congress, saying, Entrepreneurs are heroes of modern times. They rarely receive the credit they deserve. Treasury Secretary Don Regan recently reminded the student body of Bucknell University that it was under capitalism that mankind brought light where before there was darkness, heat where once there was only cold, medicines where there was sickness and disease, food where, where there was scarcity, and wealth where humanity was living in squalor. And much of what he was talking about came into being in the lifetime of many of us here in this room. But the societies which achieve the most spectacular progress in the shortest period of time are not the most tightly controlled, the biggest in size, or the wealthiest in material resources. They are the societies that reward initiative and believe in the magic of the marketplace. That was from uh, Small Business Trends. As we take this day to remember our presidents, we want to also recognize and learn from those presidents who made entrepreneurial ventures, took risks, and helped to add to the prosperity of this country. Although each of them was not successful, there's something to be learned from their stories. Today, we will be recognizing 11 U.S. entrepreneur presidents along with their challenges, resilience, and success. These 11 entrepreneur presidents are from both major U.S. political parties, and I understand that some of these presidents are controversial to some people. By including them in this article, I'm not endorsing their political views, Instead, I'm trying to learn and teach what I can from their experiences as entrepreneurs, regardless of their political party. Number one on the list is George Washington, our first president. He said, the harder the conflict, the greater the triumph. While most presidents were entrepreneurs before they took office, President Washington didn't become an entrepreneur until after his final term as president. For much of his childhood, Washington lived on a farm in Mount Vernon, Virginia, which was later inherited by his half-brother, Lawrence. When Lawrence passed away, Washington leased it from Lawrence's wife and inherited it in 1761. He later renovated the estate into a mansion, gardens, and a place to lay his family tombs, shops, barns, and various living quarters. Washington even turned a large portion into farms, with wheat being his main harvest. He then packaged the wheat and created GW Flour, one of the very first branded food products, which was then exported throughout the United States and Europe. President Washington's farm manager, James Anderson, later encouraged Washington to open a distillery on the grounds of Mount Vernon. And with just a boiler and five copper stills, the 2,250 square foot distillery became profitable almost instantly. By the year 1799, Washington had one of the largest distilleries in the country, making 11,000 gallons per year. The second president entrepreneur is Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president. He said, always bear in mind that your own resolution to succeed is more important than any other one thing. In 1833, and at the age of 23, President Lincoln and his friend William Berry opened up a general store called Lincoln Berry in New Salem, Illinois. Many sources say that they were not very successful as they purchased inventory from other stores on credit and then made a profit by reselling the items. Although the economy was doing very well at the time, the location of their store wasn't ideal as the town stopped growing. Lincoln had to sell his share of the store as a result and after Berry died, Lincoln received his $1,000 debt. This resulted in Lincoln's bankruptcy. Over 17 years, soon-to-be President Lincoln was required to pay his creditors back. On Deck said, Despite it all, Lincoln was known to rise triumphantly out of failure. 
He went on to launch a successful law practice in 1837 and became the only president to receive a patent in 1849, which was for a device to lift river boats over sandbars. President Lincoln said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. The third president entrepreneur is Andrew Johnson, our 17th president. He said, I realize there are people out there who can beat me and want to beat me. And unless I continue to innovate and evolve, I'm going to learn a painful lesson from someone who has. Before becoming president of the United States and running political campaigns, President Johnson was a very successful tailor and real estate owner. His mother was also a very talented seamstress who helped Andrew find an apprenticeship in Greenville, Tennessee, when he was only 18 years old. His talents with tailoring flourished. He opened up a shop in 1826, which became very successful, and he started investing in real estate from there. A fun fact about President Johnson is that while working at his tailor shop, quote, it eventually became a gathering place for political debate, and Johnson held his first meetings as an alderman or an elected member of the Municipal Council in 1829. The fourth entrepreneur president is Warren Harding, our 29th president. He said, America's present need is not heroics, but healing, not nostrums, but normalcy, not revolution, but restoration. President Harding was raised in a family that found interest in the newspaper. He eventually attended school at Ohio Central College, and there, according to an article by Business News Daily, he studied the newspaper trade in college after dabbling in teaching insurance and law, and graduated at the age of 17. Two years later, he and several partners purchased the Ohio newspaper, the Marion Star, for only $300 while it was near bankruptcy. Their biggest challenge was owning a Republican newspaper in a Democratic area. But Harding completely turned things around with his wife's help in managing the newspaper. The Marion Star eventually became, quote, the city's official daily newspaper, unquote. After receiving full ownership of the paper at the age of 21, Harding became worn down and had to spend time at a local sanitarium. He eventually recovered, found favor in his writing from local politicians, and earned revenue to run his political campaigns. He was a very successful businessman, and after being in the newspaper business for 39 years, he was able to sell the newspaper before dying in 1923 for $550,000, which is the equivalent of $7 million today. Nick Shark said that today, the business from the newspaper in Ohio called the Marion Star is still alive and owned by the Gannett Company, a publicly traded media holding company. The fifth entrepreneur president is Herbert Hoover, our 31st president. He said, competition is not only the basis of protection to the customer, but is the incentive to progress. At the age of 40, Herbert Hoover became a millionaire. He found success from his labors by being diligent and resilient. When Herbert was nine years old, he became an orphan, along with his two siblings. His uncle eventually took them in, but according to an article by Miller Center, the younger Hoover was shy, sensitive, introverted, and somewhat suspicious, characteristics that developed at least in part in reaction to the loss of his parents at such a young age. Although he had average to failing grades except for math, Hoover was determined and attended Stanford University. He worked in the clerk's registration office to pay for tuition and began using his entrepreneurial skills by creating a student laundry service. After graduating college with a geology degree, he got a job with Bewick Mooring and Company, working 70 hours per week in a gold mine, pushing carts. Hoover then left to start his own mining consulting business called Bermsey Silver Mines, which focused on reorganizing failing companies and finding investors to pay for developing new mines. His company quickly employed 175,000 employees, and the success that he built with his company earned him the title of Doctor of Sick Mines. By the time he was 40, his wealth had grown not only from his company, but from publishing a leading textbook on mining engineering. Other entrepreneurial successes he had included inventing a process to extract zinc that had been lost and starting up a zinc corporation. Our sixth entrepreneurial president is Franklin Roosevelt, the 32nd president. He said, the country needs, and unless I mistake its temper, the country demands bold, 
persistent experimentation. It is common sense to take a method and try it. If it fails, admit it frankly and try another. But above all, try something. At the age of 39, Franklin Roosevelt became ill with many symptoms, including paralysis of his legs. Although he was first diagnosed with paralytic poliomyelitis, his symptoms were shown to be more consistent with Julian Barr syndrome. Despite his physical circumstances, he refused to accept that he would be permanently paralyzed. He became president in 1933, but before his political endeavors, he founded a hydrotherapy center in 1926 for the treatment of his disease, according to the Freedom Voice blog. It became known as the Roosevelt Warm Springs Institute for Re Rehabilitation and still operates, serving about 4,000 people each year with all types of disabilities. The seventh entrepreneur president is Harry Truman, our 33rd president. He said, I studied the lives of great men and famous women, and I found that the men and women who got to the top were those who did the jobs they had in hand with everything they had of energy and enthusiasm and hard work. Due to medical issues, President Truman is the only president elected after 1897 who did not earn a college degree. He then served in France during World War I, and upon returning home, Truman and his wartime friend Eddie Jacobson opened a men's clothing store in Kansas City, Missouri, which was successful for three years before failing due to the post-war recession. After his shop went bankrupt, it took him 15 years to pay off his share of the firm's debts. Nevertheless, the store established Truman's reputation as a respected businessman, which in turn set him on the path to civic engagement. That quote was from On Deck. This new path paved the way for greater success in other offices. According to the same article by On Deck, he even joined the Triangle Club, which is an association of businessmen committed to improving the city and became involved in activities with the American Legion. The eighth entrepreneur president is Jimmy Carter, the 39th president. He said, it's not necessary to fear the prospect of failure, but to be determined not to fail. When President Carter was 10 years old, he stocked his family's peanut farm with produce and took it to town to be sold. He continued to save the money he made. And by the age of 13, quote, he bought five houses around the plains which the Great Depression put on the market at rock bottom prices. He then rented the homes to families in the area, unquote. That was a source Abbey Connect. The risk of losing the 2,500 acre peanut farm became very high when his father died of cancer in 1953. According to an article by Entrepreneur, Carter then returned home from the Navy to manage the struggling peanut farm. Quote, Carter reportedly threw himself into farming the way he had with his naval duties, and hard work and effective management made the Carter farm prosperous by 1959. That source was Entrepreneur. In 1971, a sudden drought hit, bringing another risk to the Carter farm. So Carter bought local farmers peanuts and sold them in bulk to big processors. Quote, this led Carter Warehouse to gross $800,000 annually by 1971, up from a mere $184 when Carter started. And that source was time, unquote. The ninth president entrepreneur is George H.W. Bush, our 41st president. He said, no problem of human making is too great to be overcome by human ingenuity, human energy, and the untiring hope of the human spirit. President George H.W. Bush found much entrepreneurial success from the oil industry after graduating from Yale with an economics degree. He first started in oil as a salesperson for Dresser, then later formed a partnership with his neighbor, John Overby, and created the Bush Overby Oil Development Company in 1951. Due to family connections, the company was financed with nearly half a million dollars from Bush's uncle. The success of the company grew, and in 1954, Bush Overby Oil controlled 71 wells, which produced 1,250 barrels of oil per day. By 1953, their company then merged with another independent oil company to create Zapata Petroleum, of which Bush became president. After years of growth, and in 1966, Bush was able to sell his holding and made about a million dollars doing so. He said, be bold in your caring, be bold in your dreaming, and above all else, always do your best.
The 10th entrepreneur president is George W. Bush, our 43rd president. He said, prosperity results from entrepreneurship and ingenuity. George W. Bush earned his bachelor's degree from Yale and then became the first U.S. president to earn his MBA, which he received from Harvard. After school, he followed in his father's footsteps in the oil industry, but took a different approach as he, quote, searched mineral right titles in county courthouses around West Texas and then would see if the owners would lease those rights to oil companies. That, unquote, that source was Time Magazine. In 1977, he then founded his own company called Arbusto, Spanish for Bush, which focused on low risk, low return wells and found a relatively low gas field. Eventually, the price of oil dropped and their company became very high risk. Spectrum 7 Energy Corporation jumped in and rescued their company, merging the two in 1984 with Bush as the CEO. According to LegalZoom, quote, after losing $400,000, it was purchased by Harkin Energy Corporation and Bush served as a consultant to Harkin, unquote. After working in the oil industry for many years, Bush decided to move into sports and invested in the Texas Rangers um, MLB team with $600,000. According to the same article by Entrepreneur, Bush then sold his stakes in the team in 1998 for $15 million for a 2,400% ROI. The 11th entrepreneur president is Donald Trump, our 45th president. He said, as long as you are going to be thinking anyway, think big. Donald Trump is a real estate guru. He studied real estate investment at the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School and invested in Philadelphia real estate while studying there. He took over his family's company to develop it into an international brand, and according to Abbey Connect, in the 1970s, he began branching into Manhattan skyscrapers and renamed the company Trump Organization. He's built luxurious hotels, such as the Grand Hyatt Hotel and Trump's Plaza, Trump's Tower on Fifth Avenue, as well as the Trump headquarters. In the 1980s, he started placing casinos in Atlantic City, adding to Trump Plaza and Trump Castle. In 1980, he even opened up his own Trump Taj Mahal, known as his own eighth wonder of the world. According to Time, Trump appears to own or control more than 500 businesses in some two dozen countries around the world. He's been very successful, but has had several bankruptcies. Amidst his many businesses all over the world, he's also published books, opened up golf and hotel resorts, owned beauty pageants, and controlled his own branded products such as Trump Steaks, Trump University, Trump Shuttle, and Trump Success Eau de Toilette. <laughs> I'm sorry I said that wrong. He said, get going, move forward, aim high, plan a takeoff. Don't just sit on the runway and hope someone will come along and push the airplane. It simply won't happen. Change your attitude and gain some altitude. Believe me, you'll love it up here. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, President Washington said, the greater the conflict, the better the triumph. We savor the hard-won victories even more. Number two, President Lincoln taught us to not let failure stop us. Perseverance is a key attribute of successful entrepreneurs. Number three, President Johnson taught us that unless we continue to innovate and evolve, we're going to learn a painful lesson from someone who has. This is so true with tectonic shifts. Number four, don't be afraid to take risks. Be determined. Don't get caught up in the circumstances and press forward as President Harding did. Number five, current circumstances will not remain forever. Diligence and resilience go, on, go a long way as President Hoover has proven. Number six, President Roosevelt encouraged us to be bold and persistently experiment. Try something. If it fails, pivot or move to something else. Number seven, President Truman taught that those who made it to the top were those who did the work with enthusiasm and everything they had. Whatever we do, we should do our best and give it all we have. Number eight, President Carter taught us that we don't need to be afraid of failure. We just have to be determined not to fail. Number nine, President George H.W. Bush taught us to be bold in our caring and dreaming. Number 10, President George W. Bush taught us that prosperity comes from entrepreneurship and ingenuity. Number 11, President Trump taught us to move forward, aim high, and create a plan. We shouldn't wait around for others to do the work for us or make things happen. Did you like today's episode? 
then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, get a free monetization assessment for your business, read our blog, or subscribe to the Monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number two, subscribe to the Monetization Nation YouTube channel or podcast. Number three, connect with Nathan on LinkedIn. And number four, follow Monetization Nation on Instagram or Twitter. If we desire monetization we have never before achieved, we must leverage strategies we have never before implemented. I challenge each of us to pick one thing that has resonated with us from today's episode and schedule a time this week to implement it to help achieve our monetization goals. Do you know of any other entrepreneurial presidents or stories of president entrepreneurs that I missed? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining us for this episode. I hope you have a fabulous day. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.